My name's Hannah Berry, I'm a graphic novelist. Uh, I have done uh, three, this is my third graphic novel which is coming out now called Livestock, which is kind of a uh, political satire, a satire on the media, um, which is about a, a young pop star who's being propelled through the limelight. Uh, she has no say in what she does or says, she's just sort of there as a kind of, uh, uh, a, basically a, an elaborate distraction technique so that people, the, the population looks at this pretty shiny thing which is on screen and ignores the, uh, the embarrassing other uh, bits and pieces which are happening in, uh, in the political world. I don't know if it's really that easy to satirise anymore because everything has become a parody of itself. It's impossible to pick things out and say, well, this is, this is a, an angle which people hadn't realised is ridiculous because everybody knows this is, this is ridiculous. But I don't know what has happened recently, but everything has become so ridiculous that you can't, you can't, you can't, um, you can't take the piss out of it in the way that you would like to. So, um, so my current book is a, is a satire, Livestock is a satire, and it's uh, a satire on the media. And uh, I think it's, um, the form really lends itself to, to satirising in this way because there's, there's so much that is uh, in the media that is, that is visual, that is immediately recognisable, which you can, you're kind of drawn towards because it's all about catching attention. And even in things like the news, which should be quite dry, it's all about uh, a certain style and a certain um, attitude and a certain kind of attention-grabbing uh, approach which is quite, it turns out it's quite easy to satirise visually, it's quite easy to, um, to do my own, my own version of. There are, throughout the book there are news pages of, of, uh, of breaking news and on the, on the pages there are uh, different adverts as well which the, they, kind of, they kind of tie into each other, that sort of, that, that similar kind of, uh, kind of pally, chummy, condescending tone which um, I think, I think you, you get quite quickly in, in comics is there's a sort of I think you can you can recognize when there's a, a slightly sardonic undercurrent to things in a way and that that I think has been that's been especially fun to play around with as a writer I think the the online has brought to me mostly this this feeling of community which is something that I don't I don't get very much in my my day-to-day -day, uh, working environment I'm, I'm just sat alone in a room by myself thinking working obviously but thinking and um, the, I think the sense of, of community that you get through things like Twitter and Facebook and, uh, and other groups is, is, is incredible. You can, you can share work with other people and you can, you can uh, look at other people's work and you can learn from it, you can take from it, you can, you can give back and you can um, sort of use it to bounce off each other without being in the same room, which is just it, it's the most incredible boon. And I do this, um, I do this weekly uh, strip for the New Statesman, which is, I think it's only available currently in print. But every week I'll, I'll, I'll tweet it. And it's interesting to see which ones are the more successful ones. Because they're not the ones that I think are the funniest ones. So I'm obviously wrong <laughs> in, my, in my attitude towards this. But it's, it's always interesting to see what other people are, um, have to say about your own work. And to be able to, to uh, collaborate, I suppose, in that, in that way. In a kind of a, a communal sense of, of um, creation. That sounded very pretentious. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Forget that. Didn't say that. Didn't <laughs>